afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Mando Lessons Live. It's been a little bit, but great to see you all here. We've got all sorts of folks in the chat. We've got Dan, Andrew, Jim, Alex, Neil, Sheldon, uh, uh, Anne or Anne, Joe, Ursinos, Wendell, Betsy, Mark, Peter, Sherry, Duke, Lewis, James, welcome everyone. Hope you're having a great start to your weekend or middle of your weekend, depending on where you're calling in from. That was a tune called Soldier's Joy. Classic old time tune in the key of D. Haven't played that one in a while, but it's a fun one. All right, so my name is Baron Collins Hill. For anyone who's new here, let me know if this is your first time in the chat or first time watching. Let me know in the chat if this is your first time tuning into a live stream or maybe you just stumbled upon this randomly. You have no idea who I am. That's cool too. Welcome. Um, that was, yeah, uh, Colder's Joy. The way that these live <laughs> streams work is I try to get all my ducks in a row and we talk about mandolin stuff. So if you have any questions about mandolin, music, tunes, all that sort of stuff, throw it out there. I love seeing the chat rock right along just as a heads up i'm gonna be gone the next two weekends so i uh, won't have a live stream i've uh, got some gigs coming up maybe even three weeks actually nope maybe just two can't remember but it'll be a while until the next one after this but glad we can all hang today oh let's see if there's anything going on in the chat and yeah feel free to throw out tunes you want to hear mandolin or music or all that sort of stuff, suggestions, requests, questions, and we'll have a good time. Dan says, new mandolin day this week, a 2015 Gibson F5G. Lovely. I love it. Uh, those are great mandolins. Congratulations on the new, the new X. Ah, let's see. I hope it's nothing like a, a new mandolin to get you playing a bunch. Oh, nice. Lewis is at Great Lakes Music Camp. Mike Compton, Don Julin, Joe Walsh. Good stuff. Hayes Griffin on guitar. Say hello to all those folks for me. I don't know Don super well. I uh, That electric mandolin, let's see if I can point at it. I bought that from Don. Um, I've taught with Mike a couple times. And I know Joe from, from Maine. So please say hello to everyone for me um, and have a blast I'm glad you're getting to getting to do it let's see Ooh, Wendell's got a set he's working on St. Anne's Silver Spear glass of beer I can never remember how the glass of beer goes um, but that sounds like a great set hey we got Uncle Bobby in the chat love to see it we got some Alaska talk. Love to see that. People making connections. <laughs> First time watching in October. Yeah. 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 A lot of you are regulars. And I love to love to see everybody um, tuning in and seeing the same names every time. But I also love seeing the new folks like Josh J. First time. Three weeks into mandolin. First instrument ever. Awesome. You've made a an excellent choice of instrument to start with. Mandolin is also my first instrument. Well, I took some piano lessons when I was like six for a month or two, I think. Um, but mandolin is the first instrument that really ever called out to me personally. Hey, Denise, just back from a walk. Awesome. I got to get one of those in today, too. It's a busy... Busy October for me. I got a gig today. I'm running a session tomorrow. Next week I will be in uh <laughs> what's the name of the town? Bellingham, Washington. Uh playing and teaching at the uh, Bellingham Celtic Music Festival. So for anyone in Northwest Washington or planning to go there, hope to see you there. And the following week I will be in Texas teaching at the O'Flaherty's Irish music retreat. I'm really looking forward to that as well. And yeah, just uh, busy times ahead. 
So hope to catch some of you out at, uh, I know I've talked to a bunch of folks already who are going to be at the Texas Week. And maybe I'll see some of you in, in Northwest Washington too. Ah, but yeah, I got to try to get some walks in too while I'm at it. Steve just woke up. Me too. <laughs> well, that's not true. I, I woke up an hour or so ago, but then just laid around in about 9.55 for me. I said, oh, geez, I got to get on the live stream. Got anything for fall? Cold, frosty, autumn, whoa, autumn woods. I do not know autumn woods. Autumn leaves. I used to be able to play that when I played jazz. Um, ooh, that's good. How about old beech leaves? There's a great tune. Um, a little bit kind of autumnal in in nature. One of my favorite old time tunes. from one of my favorite banjo albums and banjo players of all time, Adam Hurt. Uh, a great record called Earth Tones. A solo claw hammer banjo on a gourd banjo. It's good stuff. Um, oh, nice. Lewis says, Don told me I bought a mandolin. Maybe I'll pull that out if people want to. All right. Good to see you, Lewis. If people want to hear that electric mandolin, I could probably pull that thing out and explain it. People want to get rockets, but for now... I'll keep trying to keep up with the chat and uh, play some mandolin for y'all. Mark says, just purchased a Blue Ridge tenor guitar, BR-42. The first tenor guitar I bought was that same, very same model. He would like to change it to GDAE to match mandolins. What strings do I recommend? So, I recommend 46, 32, 22, 12. I'm starting to lean towards 13 for the high E. Um... And yeah, that's what I that's what I use on all my tenor guitars. I don't have a tenor really out at the moment, um, but yeah, that's that's what I recommend. You might need to widen the nut slots um, to to get those strings in there, or bring it to somebody who can do that. Um, but it's a pretty straightforward. I've done it to a lot of a lot of tenor guitars show up in that CGDA tuning, and I really like the GDA E you know, octave mandolin tuning. Um, and then if you if you want to get that CGDA, all you got to do is put a capo on the fifth fret and you're back to to kind of viola tuning or mandola tuning. All right, we got Adam tuning in from New York. Love to see it. Oh, a Wabash Cannonball. Fancy mellow and demo backup for that tune. I, all I can think of is like the, 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 the chorus. Um, is it... song that I don't, I don't know enough of the words and the lyrics and 
melody, I can just kind of fake my way through it, but I should, that's one I should actually get, because that's a classic. Ooh, all right, Alex says, uh, Tone Poems, book, that's one, of, that's a great record, if anyone doesn't know the Tone Poems, um, I think there's a couple, maybe three volumes of Tone Poems, there's also a Tone Poets, where, so Tone Poems is the same people, T Tony, Gr Tony Rice and David Grisman, um, playing a bunch of different vintage instruments, and then Tone Poets is a bunch of different musicians playing the same vintage instrument. Um, so both, all that stuff is great. I didn't know they had a book out. Um, yeah, it must be a sign. Ooh, Ann or Ann, apologies, I don't want to say your name there, uh, says, for linking mandolin tunes in Irish, are there any pointers? I try to keep the same tune type and same key for tune sets. That's a very safe way to go, for sure. Um, you know, I think the best thing you can do is just try a lot of stuff, and a lot of it just kind of won't, either won't work, or just like doesn't really kind of give you the feeling you're looking for. Anytime you're building sets of like, you know, two or three tunes, you know, you got to think, like, what, what am I going for? Like, what do I want this change to me, like, to feel like? Do I want it to really, you know, like, kind of amp up the, like, oh, we changed tunes and now it's more energetic? Or do we want it to kind of, like, mellow out in a way? Or try to stay that same kind of energy level? Like, what is the, what is the change doing? Um, so, traditionally, um, I think that's a great way to go. You know, a lot of if you're in a more traditional Irish music session, um, you'll hear people usually staying within the same tune. Uh, sorry, the same tune, the same tune type. So like if you're playing reels, play all reels. Sometimes you'll hear people do like a hornpipe to a reel or a hornpipe into a couple of reels, you know, start out a little slow and then speed it up. Um, occasionally we'll hear people do jigs to reels, but that's kind of like a really epic sound that's a little less common and maybe a little less traditional but not unheard of you know there's always exceptions to the rule um s playing within the same key is a very safe way to go um another thing like there i think as you as you try out stuff you'll find things that work so kind of vague guidelines that i have in my head for tune sets is like staying in the same key is great um if you want like a slightly more um kind of abrupt sounding change with a little bit more interest you can go like if let's say we're starting in this key of G um, go from G uh, I think there's there's so many like you can go G to D that's gonna give you a little bit uh, sounding uh maybe g to a is going to be a much more epic sort of sound Something like maybe G to, I don't know, G to C might have a little bit of like a calming effect or kind of energy drop because it's like, in general, I think the kind of the sharper the key, you know, G, D, A, E kind of build up intensity. And if you're going the other direction, it can sort of like mellow out. So if I go... Going to C. I 
I feel like often going from G to C or G to F has sort of like a net energy loss in a way that is not bad, um, but often, you know, in I would say 90, 95% of the like sets I put together, I kind of want the energy to go up just to kind of keep people engaged and have that feeling of like, yeah, it's getting more exciting rather than, and eh, now it's really mellow. Um, so th those are some thoughts. I have some lessons in the technique and fundamentals section of my website, mandolessons.com, talking about how to put sets of tunes together, and I talk about a lot of that stuff in a little more detail. All right, Adam's going to the first music camp in February. Which camp? Um, there's lots of great camps all around the world, and I definitely recommend searching them out. It's a great way to connect with the community and really um, get a lot of musical inspiration. Deborah says, just got my first mandolin last weekend for my birthday. Happy birthday, and congrats on getting the best instrument ever. I already know four chords, mainly a ukulele player. I've got eight of those, yeah. <laughs> You're, you'll probably end up with more than one mandolin at some point, too. It's a, it's a fun world to enter, so congrats on, on the new mandolin, and happy birthday. Uh, what city in Texas? It's outside of Dallas, Fort Worth. I think it's in like Midlothian. I've never been to Texas, so I don't know anything about it. Um, I recently saw that it's right next to one of the like top barbecue, pl like Texas barbecue places, uh, Goldie's. It's like half an hour from Goldie's, and I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it there just because it's. I'm not gonna have a car. I'm flying in, and it's gonna be a busy week and. I think if you want to get food from Goldie's, you got to show up at 6 in the morning. But, um, yeah, I think outside Dallas-Fort Worth, uh, you can look it up. It's the O'Flaherty's Irish Retreat. Wayne from Winnipeg, good to have you here. Welcome. When did, Bill says, uh, when did I start playing mandolin? Um, I started, I, I count from the year 2000, because uh, it's easy to count from, but it could have been 99. So I would have been 10, 11, 12, somewhere in there. Cool, nice. Yeah, Andrew was thinking about old beach leaves. Yeah, it's a, it's a very, that's like, I love that. It's like one of my favorite tunes of all time. And it's very arpeggio-y, so it's, it is easy to kind of like, kind of stiffen up with it. Uh, Again, kind of in my last lesson, I was talking about, you know, working on those kind of arpeggio. Uh, I'm not going to try to do that now without thinking about it. Um, but, you know, the more you work on that kind of arpeggio stuff, um, the more you can kind of loosen up when it comes to finding those arpeggios in tunes. Hey, James says, it's been a while since I joined one of these. Had a busy summer, including my first Irish session and new mandolin. Very fun. Excellent. Um, ooh, a session in London. I'm not going to be able to help you out there, but maybe somebody in the chat can, because I know we've got a bunch of folks from England, at least, um, that are regulars here. Um, cool. Maybe I'll pull out the electric mandolin. Uh, Joe says, tenor guitar. When you change it to GDAE, it brings it into the range of a six-string guitar. My tenor doesn't sound that great in that range. It definitely can depend on the tenor. And yeah, it, it there's always, you know, exceptions to... You know, if you're playing with, like often if I'm playing tenor guitar with a guitar player, I'll capo up. So I'm back in that sort of C, G, D, A rail, capo halfway up the neck. And that just gets me into a different range because you're right. It is, G, D, A, E is much closer to kind of open guitar tuning um, when the guitar player doesn't have a capo on. Um, so figuring out like, okay, how can we stay out of each other's range and not just make a muddy mess is certainly something to keep keep in mind all right josh says i b finished your beginner series what do you recommend next i recommend um going into the tunes section the fiddle tune section of the website and you can you can sort them by whatever like if you have a feeling you want to learn irish music or old-time music um you can filter that way what i and you can also filter by a kind of like uh experience level so you can filter out like show me all the beginner tunes um that might be a good way to go and then i would say the best thing you can do is just like listen go through listen to all the 
tunes just kind of go through like, oh, what does this one sound like? What does this one sound like? Um, and that'll give you a really good sense of like, oh, what do I like? And like, are there certain genres of tunes I'm gravitating towards? Or do I like jigs rather than reels right now? Or major and minor tunes? All that stuff. Um, the best way to learn about it is just to listen. So listen through all the tunes, uh, write down the ones that really, you know, uh, kind of stick out to you and sound exciting to you. And even if it's something that isn't in the beginner section, maybe you find an intermediate or an advanced tune that's just like really your favorite thing you've ever heard. I'd say go for it, take it really slow. Um, and you know, you may not get it all at once. You may get a couple notes in and be like, whoa, okay, I understand that this is not a beginner tune. But it's a good learning experience, and often that interest in like, oh, okay, this is something I really, this is what I like to hear, that's going to help you really, um, you know, keep the momentum up of like, I want to learn this particular tune, so I'm going to put in the work and, you know, like keep coming back to, to the mandolin. Uh, that I think that is really kind of help, what helps drive me. Fidel from Halifax, good to have you here. What's the minimum skill you need to fake your way through a song with other players? Um, I don't really know the answer. I think like the better, the more skill you have, the better you are at faking. Like you can always fake through, and if you have no skill, you're just not going to be very good at faking your way through it, or you're going to be playing less. Like I'll fake my way through it. Oh, I don't even know what key this is in. Uh. Mm and the song's over and you haven't played. And then if you have a little bit of skill, you say, okay, yeah, this is in a... And you're playing something like that, and then you you get to, like when I was doing with Wabash Cannonball, it's like, I know that tune. me faking my way through Wabash Cannonball and I think like the way that I'm able to get some amount of melody out of that and then if I was asked to take a solo I'd be able to do it is because I've spent a lot of time you know like thinking about a melody and singing melodies and just trying to find them on the instrument which really builds your ability to kind of fake your way through it for the lack of a better term. Yes, um, and in Scottish tradition, sets can definitely be more varied. Yeah, you'll often, in Scottish tradition, you'll have, like, um, kind of air into, like, you know, like, jig into reel. Like, you'll have kind of longer, more epic sets that start out with a really slow tune into, like, maybe, like, a stress bay, into some jigs that are a little more higher energy, into a set of reels and, you know, longer, drawn-out things where the, the tune type changes more than in traditional Irish music. Yep, Neil's got good thoughts here. He says, for the how to fake stuff, says, try to figure out the tempo and the key, especially try to land on the root note. Sometimes just the root, note, root tones find that it's hard to do. Yeah, that's that's exactly the thing to do, you know. Figure out what key something's in, whether it's a jig or a reel. Um, see if you can start pulling out root notes or just uh, chord progression or a simple version of the melody, and that pretty soon you're just playing the tune and it doesn't feel like doesn't feel like uh, faking it anymore, even though you kind of, I feel like I'm always faking it. <laughs> awesome. Adam says he's going to Nashville Acoustic Beginner Jam Camp. Awesome. I'm unfamiliar with that, but it sounds like a great time. Adele says, been practicing with a metronome, going slower and faster, finding it really useful. You can learn a lot of tune playing it slowly. Yeah. Metronomes are really great tools to work with. Airy March, Strass Bay, and Reels, yep. Uh, and Jerry Holland is an amazing legend of tunes, so that's a, definitely a good good thing to go for. Oh, nice. Uncle Bobby will be there as well. Mm. 
Betsy says, I think the mandolin's easier guitar, but I find a lot of people are intimidated by mandolin because of the number of strings. That means they are impressed when they meet a mandolin player. Yeah, it's just a little more uncommon, you know. There's a lot more guitar players out there, so hearing a guitar player play G, C, and D, it's like, yep, heard that a lot. Um, and mandolin, you know, definitely, if you want to play, like, G, C, and D chords on a guitar, it's a lot more stretching and finger work to do than... And it has that kind of sparkly sound. It's a little more uncommon, so it, yeah, it's just a little more, um, people are like, oh, mandolin. Don't see one of those every day. Listening is practicing. That is good, good way to put it, Adele. Merrily kiss the Quaker into drowsy Maggie. An idea for a request. I can't remember how either of those tunes goes right now. Those are definitely tunes that I can play if somebody else starts them. <laughs> but that's sort of how I am with most, I would say, the vast majority of Irish tunes. Is I've got the list that I can start. Um, and then I would say most Irish tunes, I... Well, I wouldn't say I can play most Irish tunes. But if I'm at a session, I would say 60 plus percent of the tunes... Once I've like gotten to know the session, I would say uh, I can start ten percent of them. I can, I don't know, thirty percent of them, and sixty percent of them I can play, but I don't, I couldn't start them, and I maybe don't know what the name is. Ooh, Ronald has a good question. I'm left-handed but playing right-handed, and find that. In order to play faster, I don't have the coordination in my strumming arm. Any suggestions? Well, what I will say is there's a lot of people, um, a lot of great mandolin players who are left-handed that play righty. Um, and I think that's generally, like, it's a lot easier to find right-handed mandolins and right-handed mandolin instruction. So I think, um, you know, there's a lot of great mandolin players who are left-handed and play left-handed as well, and musicians in general. But, um, you know, it's a right-handed world. <laughs> I'm sure you know much better than I do. Um, so I think it's good to try um, playing right-handed. I think you're on the right track. You can always, you know, if things really keep feeling uncomfortable, you can always try left-handed. But I think, you know, keep on with right-handed. I think a lot of that coordination comes from just, like, more time spent with the instrument. Like, I often think, you know, I'm right-handed. I'm extremely right-handed but ultimately my left arm you know my right arm's doing more kind of big strength movements but like if I think about writing that's a lot of little movements with my right hand but I, can, I can't write at all with my left hand but I'm able to do all of sort of the little fiddly small movement bits on the neck of the instrument um, just through repetition and time spent with the instrument in my hands I think you know that's a lot of these problems just kind of solve themselves as you just play more music. Any new instruments in the background? Uh, oh, hang on. The chat jumped here. Tom from Newfoundland, good to have you here. First time tuning in, welcome. All right, Dan is the same way, left hand and playing righty. Uh, so you're in good company. Chris Thiele is left handed. Uh, he's like kind of ambidextrous, but he writes with his left hand. Um, and yeah, they're, they're definitely out there. Any new instruments in the background? I have one that I can't really say too much about quite yet because it's a coming coming up thing. I don't really, I, I'll pull out that electric mandolin because I haven't spent. It's not totally new. I've had it for six months or so, but uh, it's fun. So this is, Lewis was talking about Don Julian earlier, and this is an instrument that I bought from Don that I really enjoy. So this is uh, kind of hard to explain. It's, it's built by Rano, Ron Oates, um, and 
it's tuned so the bottom it's a five string instrument um, and these the lowest four pitch are GDAE octave mandolin tuning on a fairly short scale it's like an 18 inch scale so but because it's electric you don't need to like drive the top of the instrument as much so you can get away with a shorter scale and then it has a high B above the E so it's like another fifth G D A E B But if you put a capo on the fifth fret, yeah, fifth fret, what you get is, is this going to work at all here? Yeah. Um, is you get a, a mandolin. So now that I've got a capo on the fifth fret, I've got a mandolin. Ooh, that's going <laughs> to, not in the right and it's going to be out of tune, but mandolin, G, D, A, E, and a low C. So it's like, uh, or a, you can think of mandola and mandolin. related tuning wise like anything with five strings in straight fifths you know I have that lesson on the the cello the mandocello five, ten string it's kind of the same idea once you start capoing up you get some different different options there all right ooh tamlin I'll do a little tamlin on this thing because electric mandolin and tamlin is a good combo Uh, mandolin tuned in fifth, more predictable than guitar. Yeah, I definitely think of mandolin as more predictable. Thank you. 
little bit of Tamlin on the electric mandolin. <sighs> Gail from Montana tuning in. Great to have you here. A super chat from Joe. Thank you so much. The coffee fund. Thank you. I'm already, I already drank my cup of coffee and I'm totally out. So thanks for keeping the cup full, Joe. <laughs> Appreciate it. I will be teaching mandolin at uh, O'Flaherty's in, in, Ir in, in Ireland, in Texas. Um, there is a there is also a tenor banjo teacher there. I can't remember who off the top of my head, but a great staff all around. We've got more lefties in the chat. Love to see it. Peter and Ron. Wow. Sheldon as well. Geroid. Wow, so many lefties. Amazing. Love to see it. Yeah. Alex says, mandolin is tuned perfectly for power chords. Classic metal has been playing, been played a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> opportunities there <laughs> yep yeah I got all the smarts got the tenor six and mandocello I love those things <laughs> I miss bending strings you can bend on a you can bend on an acoustic I, I really love bending I think it's under underutilized it's definitely takes some finger strength that you got to build up because the strings are so tight but You can't, you can't like hold the band or bend as far, but I love the sound of a bent strings on an acoustic mandolin. I think it's underutilized. Oh, how do, Mr. Nat, I, I can't, I wish I could. I don't, I couldn't, I don't know how to play Mr. Natural, unfortunately. Yeah, so the electric is, uh, yeah, single strings, so four or five string. Um, they make eight and ten string electric mandolins. I, I really am just kind of going for kind of, it's got a little more of a, like a electric guitar sound where it's just single strings, um, which is what I'm generally going for when I'm playing electric. Any strings sound weak on that? I heard the Mando Birds had a weak E string sound. So that's one thing about electrics in general, that E, the high E, is just so high pitched that it's often the weak note on on an electric um so because this electric is um an octave down it's in more kind of guitar range but let's put this back on if i go to that kind of mandolin range with the high e i'll even tune it how about that don't know if that's really so I think this one is pretty well balanced like a lot of times I'm, I'm not an, an expert on electric instruments um, I think sometimes what it can be with the high E is it's a high tension high pitched note and sometimes with um, single coil pickups they're just like exceedingly bright but um this thing's got humbuckers so they're they're a little softer i think um there's also a lot like i've got the tone rolled back pretty far um but if I, if I kind of open everything up. It can get pretty bright, especially on like the bridge pickup. Oh, 
So, yeah, in general, I like the, like, lower pitch of kind of having, being down an octave or rolling the, rolling the highs off with the tone knob. Yeah, Watch House. Neil says, been listening to a lot of Watch House, formerly Mandolin Orange. Yeah, Andrew definitely will bend a string here and there. Love that. <laughs> All right, I'll, 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 set, I'll, I'll call Quentin Tarantino up and see if I can get Electric Tamlin in. Yeah, I don't have it hooked up right now, but occasionally I'll hook into a, like a distortion pedal and really make make a lot of noise with some epic epic tunes um what amplifier am i playing through so i'm playing through the middle one there um it's sort of based on a, a tweed princeton from the 50s but it's a modern build um there's a friend of mine out here who's an excellent amp builder anyone in in the pacific northwest go check out matt dawson um he's in portland here and i had an old little actual 50s tweed champ that was great um but i was he he fixed it up for me i first met him through that because he's he's got a reputation for working on those old instrument old you know 60 what is it now 70 year old instruments er, amps and you know really treating them right because you don't want to just like you know take out a, a lot of people will just be like okay this needs all new insides and then you got a new amp not a not a 50 year old 70 year old thing um so he, he was he's really careful about you know doing only what's necessary to make to make the instrument or the instrument the amp be its best i'm so not used to talking about amps um but in talking with him i was sort of like i don't know like what's your favorite kind of thing and i won't go into all the details but uh this it's a <laughs> maybe i will just for anyone who happens to be into amps it's a um built it's a 5f2a uh, is the schematic, except it has a choke somewhere in there to reduce the noise noise floor. Um, and it's a 10-inch speaker in a kind of oversized... I think you could probably fit a 12-inch speaker in there. But um, I just told Matt, I was like, build me your favorite amp. Because I, I like his style, and he did, and it's awesome. And if you're into amps... He also offers amp building classes. So if you have ever want to build build your own tube amp, um, he does that. I think as long as you've got like basic sol soldering and electronic knowledge, which I do not have, um, I think you can go there and learn a lot from him in both kind of building experience and theory and leave with an amp just like this one. Nice. And the Sky Hill is doing more lessons on his channel. That's very cool. Wow, man, so many lefties. Wayne as well. Amazing. How do you get away from noodling around playing the same lick every time when picking up the instrument? Well, <laughs> most days I would say I don't. <laughs> I mean, I think for me, the way I get away from that is like I'm really into tunes, so tunes aren't noodling. Uh, and you know, tunes are made up of little phrases that could be kind of like little noodly licks, but they're organized thoughtfully. So by learning new tunes and playing tunes, that's sort of my way of learning new phrases on the instrument. And, um, you know, tunes are built up of scales and arpeggios and all these sort of building blocks that we think about. But to sit around and play scales all day... is not as fun as actually playing a tune. So that is, um, yeah, like I think playing tunes, listening to a lot of music and being like, kind of listening closely and being like, okay, what is this person doing? Maybe transcribing a little lick here and there. It's really helpful. Um, let's see. Yeah, so most electric mandolins I seem, see seem to have single strings, except for the Eastman's. Yeah, so the Eastman L-Ray makes a, a ten, a, an 8-string 
I think only. I kind of wish they would make a... Maybe they do make a four. I'm not sure. I would love to see them make a five string. Because those look cool, but I, I kind of always want that low C personally. Um, they're out there. Um, so Mando Bird made an eight string for a while. Um, Jonathan Mann, Mandolins with two N's. Um, I don't know. I think he's still building. Uh, makes four, five, eight, and ten strings. Uh, Bell Muse, <coughs> I believe is what the company is now. I know the names have changed a little bit. They're out there. Um, but yeah, I, I always kind of prefer the... I listen to a lot of like Western Swing. So like Jethro Byrne. Well, Jethro Byrne isn't Western Swing. Uh, Tiny Moore. Um, kind of a champion of that style. Played a, a five string single course electric mandolin. Um, he has a great album with Jethro Byrne. It's called Back to Back. Um, so that's sort of the sound that I, I have heard most and kind of want to hear when I'm playing electric mandolin. Hey, Uncle Bobby, thank you for the super chat. Thank, yeah, thank you to all everyone who supports. Definitely not required, but greatly appreciated, whether it's uh, super chats here or there's a lot of patrons as well in, in that have kind of join me in the Patreon community and people who send money in through PayPal. It's all greatly appreciated. I have no personal preference how it comes in, but it just helps, uh, helps it all keep rolling. It helps me do these live streams, so appreciate it. Play along request. Can we play a little slower for those of us who just learned the tune? Definitely. Yeah, I'll I'll do uh when we when we do 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 uh Soldier's Joy. I'll I'll go nice and slow this time. And that's a I appreciate the request. I always get a little excited and kind of speed things up. Uh hey, cool. Uh Neil says tomorrow Matt Heaton, uh I'm assuming on Matt and Shannon's YouTube channel doing a bazooki backing session. Bringing in the new Davy Stewart octave. Very fun. Yeah. Uh, so check that out if you're not doing anything tomorrow. <laughs> That's true. Joe says left versus right. Stringed instruments take both hands. And all of us have weaker sides. That is that is the truth. Have I ever made it to the Puget Sound Guitar Workshop? I have not. Um... But somebody was just talking to me about maybe if I was ever going to get up there. And uh, I would love to. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely kind of new to the air. I've been here two and a half years, but it's been a pandemic the whole time. So I'm, I'm just starting to kind of get into the community. But I would love to. I've got friends that teach up there and um, would love to make it up sometime. Uh, AV says, anyone have any thoughts on the gold tone composite tenor banjo? They're about 250. I have never played one, I don't think. Um, so I can't help you out there. The nice thing about tenor banjos is they can be a bit more of a project, but a lot of the old nice ones, um, can be found really cheap, um, kind of compared to old, you know, you can find tenor banjos from the 20s for four or five hundred dollars which I think is going to well outperform any kind of modern. Uh, I, don't, I don't know, again, I don't know the gold tones. Um, and, you know, they might need some setup and a little bit of work. Uh, it definitely takes a learning curve to, like, know what you're looking for. If anyone is looking for an old tenor banjo at a good price, shoot me an email because I've got a friend in Maine that I can hook you up with who's a tenor banjo master and has a bunch of old tenor banjos that he's always fixing up and selling to people. Yes, uh, Yus Trinivas is the, uh, there's, there's, there's many, but the most famous, uh, is Yus Trinivas, Mandolin Trinivas. Um, they tune, I can't remember how they tune, maybe like AD, AD, or that sort of fourth, fifth, fourth equivalent. I uh, can't totally remember. Um, but that's, that's a very cool stuff. Look up Mandolin Srinivas. S-R-I-N-I-V-A-S, I believe. Hey, Mike, just joining, sorry. <laughs> Taken aback by the electric five string. Yeah, so I've been playing this, holding it mostly while I talk mandolin. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is a five string electric mandolin. 
the bottom five four strings are an octave mandolin G D A E, and then it has a high B on it. So if you put a capo on the fifth fret, you get C G D A, like a mandola, and the high strings are then G D A E, like a regular mandolin. As well, Vox electric mandolin. Do they make electric mandolins? Uh, there is an interesting history of like those K bat wings and Rickenbacker made some electric mandolins and then they made a modern electric one in the 2000s. They're out there for sure. Um, but now let's go back to, I'm going to turn off my amp. And we're going to go back to Acoustic Land, where we will play a little bit of Soldier's Joy at a nice, easy, Saturday morning tempo. So this is the tune of the week, key of D, very arpeggio based. Um, and pass it back and forth a couple times here. I'll play the melody, you play the chords, then we'll swap.
going a little kind of slow to fast helps me get in the groove as well hopefully that was helpful for everyone else as well yeah i do like that suggestion betsy all right well what should we do next week which is actually going to be like three weeks from now um put your suggestions in the chat as i catch up with the very last of what's going on here and then we'll all go off and keep playing mandolin um i don't know i just wanted to check and see if I don't think Matt and Shannon are doing a session this week, but I should make sure. Nope, doesn't look like it. Yeah, so I will be gone for the next couple weeks here uh, for gigs on the weekend. Hey, I've been working on Soldier's Joy for the month. <laughs> Excellent. Ooh, Dunagore. I do love Dunagore. One of my favorite Irish tunes of all time. Let's see. Long jams, look at Denise's handy dandy little notebook. Dunagore has never been done. Great suggestion from James. One of my favorite Irish tunes of all time. A reel in the key of G. It's got a big D chord in the top of the B section. Website, it, it's got an extra O in it, so it's Dunagore. Um, it's a castle in Ireland. 
that's where it got its name. I've also heard it called Mika Russell's. Um, yeah, so let's do that one. It's a great tune. It's like one of my favorite tunes. A great tenor banjo tune, hint, hint, Denise, and anyone out there with a tenor banjo is plunky and fun on a tenor banjo. All right, well, great to see you all. Thank you all for tuning in. Thanks for the super chats and all the support over the years. Great hanging out with you all every uh, every week, but <laughs> every once in a while these days. Hopefully I'll get back into a little more consistency once the late fall rolls around. Um, yeah, but great to see you all. Keep picking. Don't stop just because the stream is over. Keep at it and see you all again soon. Bye-bye.